Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. I still have a cold, um, but I have tissue. <laughs> Tonight we are going to start a gnome project. Now, um, I'm going to do this over several nights. You don't have to, but time prevents me from sitting down and doing it all at one time. But I want to show you the materials. I'm cleaning up my mess here. The materials that we'll need, and then I will show you how to get the body going. Um, first thing I bought or picked up were was um, felt squares. These, well, they're technically rectangles. If we're being truthful, ooh, I'll show you when I'm taking the needles out. I was working on it, but these felt rectangles and whatever colors you want, and they come in some fun colors. I can't wait to do some spring gnomes. I am gnome obsessed. I'm sorry, but anyway, you'll need two for the body, and then I only had two in the gray, and I had a pink, a piece of pink. I have all different colors, but um, for this, I already cut it, but um, you're going to make the bottom out of the pink, so you'll need three squares if you want to make, or rectangles, if you want to make exactly what I'm making. If you have fiber or felt by the yard, that works. If you have other fabric, that works. You just want something a little stiff which is why felt does good. So you have your pieces. Um, I'm using embroidery floss. You can use regular thread. Um, the look I'm going for, I'm using floss. I have pink and white out, but I also have black that I've already um, threaded on an embroidery needle. And I have a lot of it out too. That might be a bit excessive. We'll cut that back. Um, and I've already threaded my needle, but you'll need specific embroidery needles because the tip or the hole is big enough for actual embroidery floss to go through a black cat pin cushion or whatever kind of pin cushion you might have or not. I happen to have a black cat one because, you know, I have black cats. Um, th this is just where I have the extra. I'm using Dollar Tree socks and... Dollar Tree stones and I just put them in this vase because it's easier to pour and I have it handy But this vase is going to do double duty um, I purchased from Joanne Some fake fur now it is expensive. I'm not gonna lie. This was $29 a yard However, I got it at 40% off don't ever pay full price if it's full price use your coupon and I only got a quarter of a yard, so this is about $5 worth. So it actually works out to be less because you get, this is doubled, you get a fair amount to make lots of gnomes if you want. If you buy just the faux fur in a piece like this size, you're going to pay more than the $5. It's definitely more expensive. But if that's all you want, that works too. I'll use this so because, again, I'm gnome obsessed, guys. Uh, but this is... And I just ate the fur. Fine for me. So I bought a quarter of a yard. And then I wanted some of this. This is definitely more burgundy in person. But it is a red tone. And this is just. They call it luxury fleece. It's a little nicer than the cheap fleece. Um, it was $17.99 a yard. At 40% off. And I got half a yard. So this was about $5 or $6 as well. And I have a fair amount. The reason I wanted the better quality is I want it to drape nicely when I put it on the as the hat. I liked the bunching effect of the nicer fleece. The cheaper stuff may not do that, but you do you. Whatever you want to invest in, wherever your budget tells you you can do. Um, I picked up these pom-poms. They're really nice, too. They're like the faux fur. Um, they're called Fab Lab Craft, and this was $4.99, and I got them, I used a 50% coupon on these, and if you can tell, there's gray, light brown, dark brown, and black, so lots of gnome noses or pom-pom balls, whichever way you want to go. You can also string those up, um, and it, I just grabbed a bunch of, um, uh, trim different kinds of trim different colors because I'm not sure how I want to decorate it yet So I have all different of that you want crafting scissors and I have fabric scissors to cut the fabric um, The felt you can use either scissors on oh here's a different trim. I bought This is that mermaid it goes from gold to white which is kind of fun And then I picked up these which I don't think I'm going to use for this project But these were 80% off 
and they're just picks with bells. If I don't use them now, they will certainly get used next Christmas. I have a, a drawer behind me that I stick all my little trims and embellishments in. You're going to use a hot glue gun. And if you don't want to hand stitch this like I'm doing, you can use your glue gun to put this together. And then I'm going to get my sewing machine out. That's why this is going to take a couple visits to the craft room. Um, and then I picked up, well, these earrings are for me to wear. Uh, you'll see in the Dollar Tree haul, I grabbed some bigger heart-shaped earrings to use as like an embellishment on the hats. And then I got these plastic ones too because I'm not really sure, again, what direction... I'll get it built and then we'll worry about um, embellishments. And then you'll need craft a piece of paper. I just grabbed this blue out of my stash of craft paper and then I'll show you how I'm building this together. So give me a second, I will turn you around and I will show you how we're gonna build the base first. All right, the first thing I did is I found a circle, circumference, that this would go around there's all kinds of fancy measurements i'm just not fancy so i said oh look it fits around this vase so this vase now is going to become the size of my bottom the circle i'm going to trace this so i just sat it on a piece of craft paper and i traced around it and i cut out this circle any circle will do. I could have traced one of these guys if I wanted smaller. If I wanted bigger, I could have traced that. You can use a compass or a protractor. Any circle you want, you just need to make sure that at the end of the day, you have enough felt to go around it and close it up. That's the end game with your measurements. So I cut this circle and then I took the pink and I cut out two circles. I've already stitched one together. And so this is the bottom and I'll show you how I attach it. I fed the needle, the needle through, the, through the bottom with this knot. I want that to be, it's gonna be the inside. And that just, hides it it'll be the on the inside so this is the bottom right you start right here where you fed it through and we're going to do the blanket stitch which is you go in and around it until you get to the end here and you have this loop and you feed that through the loop. And that's gonna keep it up top. And then we're gonna do the next stitch. This is not a secure stitch like you're sewing clothing or something. Um, this is purely decorative and it works really well on felt because felt doesn't fray. And then we just feed that up through the loop but it will hold this all together, which is, I guess, my point. And see how you're getting this running, like, loop stitch? I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm just going to keep going around and around. You want to be pretty even. Like, I'm going approximately a quarter of an inch space. There you go. About a quarter of an inch between each stitch. And then pulling it. And you don't really want to pull it too tight, but you're locking it together. And what's happening is this wall is building. So I'm going to do one more stitch for you to see. And then I'm going to speed it up. Can you see what I'm doing? About a quarter of an inch in. Pulling it through. And you can even hold your finger here on that. Because you are going to feed your needle through that loop before you pull it taut. And again, this is called the blanket stitch. And I'm going to keep going all the way around until I get right back to this spot. And I'll be right back when I finish. Right. I went all the way around the bottom. And what's left, it just made a cylinder. So you're going to overlap these two pieces here. And that'll be your last stitch just to hold them together at the bottom. And then we're gonna stitch our way up the side and close it, same blanket stitch. 
So watch that. I've put it through my loop, tightened it up. Now we're going to work our way, and I'm going to get some pins going here. You just want to make sure it's straight and flat, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to go straight up this back seam. And I decided it is probably going to be the back seam. But you want to hold it together with just some straight pins if you have them. Now, again, if you don't want to stitch this, you can glue it. And that's perfectly fine. Hot glue works really well on felt. And that will close it up. But here's what we're doing. Same stitch, right? We have our seam here, our two pieces, and we just want to close it up. So we're going to pick up a piece of this felt and go into that felt. And then we're going to pull it through. Oops. And I got a lot of felt to go through on that first stitch. And we're going to get this circle and we're going to go through the loop and pull it. The first one always looks a little weird. If you want to go into the back and up, you can do that. And then, but again, it's on the back side, so I'm not that concerned. And then we're going to go about a quarter of an inch. We're going to go in and just pick up a bite. You can hold your hand in here too. But what we've got is a little piece of that felt and a little piece of this felt. We're going to pull it through until we get down to this little loop. And if you didn't grab this loop, it would just be like a, a ziggy zaggy stitch, but this is what makes it decorative. And then you just pull it up and not overly tight. And you do this all the way up. So we take a little bite of this piece, a little bite of the top piece, pull it through. It's this simple. Don't overthink it. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. And then you feed it through this loop. I'm sorry if I'm not giving you a great view. 2020 is going to be better because I'm going to figure out how to do the overhead camera. And I'll do one more and then I will go off and fix this up. All right. So you take a bite of the bottom piece, a bite of the top piece. You come through. And then you have this loop right here, and that's where you're feeding the needle through. And if you don't work well with long pieces of floss, use smaller pieces. It's fine. I just happen to have done this already once. And then you tighten it up. And that is the blanket stitch. And it's not even perfect. Like, I'm not even here. I don't care. I'm just going to get it closed up, and we'll be back. All done. And I just... Blanket stitched them up the back. It's not even straight. I, I'm not obsessed about it. It's on the back. The bottom is on. And this is, like I said, a decorative stitch. It is not an apparel stitch. It will hold up, but it's not, you know, you're not, it's not a strong enough to wear this type stitch. But it's super cute. And look how it stands up flat, which is what we want. And that you want this material. So first thing we're going to do is I still have my embroidery floss, enough of it, I think, on here. We're going to make a drawstring to help close this when I fill it up. And all I'm going to do is start on the outside, and I'm going to go give myself, you know, a decent amount of top, because we're also going to hot glue it. But we're just going to take some big bites all the way around, not even worrying about it being even. You just want to make sure you have a decent amount at the top. You just keep feeding it around and you're not pulling it all the way through because you're going to grab these threads and pull it when it's time to close it up. Um, I believe in the sewing world, this would be a basting stitch. And you would also make this, do this type of a stitch to make ruffles in um, garments. I believe that's what you do. I sew enough to cause myself trouble. That's how much sewing I can do. I know how to sew. I know how to read a pattern, but don't ask me all the technical terms of everything. But I'm pretty certain... This is called a basting stitch and one more stitch and that's it. I'm all the way around. I'm going to pull the needle off 
And then what we have left are these two threads to gather when we're ready to close them up, close up the body. So we did that. Next step, and I've already done it, is I took a Dollar Tree sock and I just poured stones in it. So what I have done is I filled it up, but I want it to be able to like go flat in the bottom when I drop it in. So I'm going to give myself a decent amount of space. And then I'm just going to tie a knot in it. You can cut this off if you want, but you don't have to because we're going to fill this with felt, with fiber fill. I forgot that in my materials list, but you need fiber fill. So then we're going to take this little sack of rocks that we created, leave the knot to the top. And you kind of just need to make sure I have fur everywhere. And then you're going to just pounce it like that. And guys, look at it. We now have a gnome that's going to stand up, filling up the body uh, with the fiber. And that's it. Um, you could also, if you have any old pillows, because like I said, this fiber is not cheap. Take an old pillow, pull the stuffing out of it. It might be flat, but it doesn't matter. You can, it'll still work. These strings that I placed, watch this. It's now closed. All right, guys, we're ready for the next step. And what we're going to do is the hat. And instead of doing two seams and doing one whole triangle, I'm going to do... A half triangle basically I'm gonna go up like this so I only have one seam it works out just the same um, but I'll have a hidden seam so I'll show you that <laughs> all this fur so the first thing we're gonna do is take a tape measure and measure around this body now I know this one is a little less stuff than the bigger one but this one's about 11 inches around and the bigger one the taller one actually I stuffed a little more is um, 11 and a half inches so what I'm gonna do is I am I have this on the fold so that's a folded seam I'm gonna measure out six inches from this fold and that's where we're gonna start to cut at the six inch point because you want to make it double and then there'll be some seam allowance to eat up any difference so I'm just gonna take a pencil right out here at the six inch point and just mark it so I know where to put my um, ruler and that's where this is gonna start and then I'm just gonna go out to here because that's as long as my ruler is and that should be plenty of hat and then I have a rotary cutter. You don't have to do this. You can certainly use a regular cutter. You can cut two triangles and sew them together. Not a big deal. But when I stitch this piece together, it'll hang over just like that. And it'll be perfectly fine. And I sewed those shut. I got my sewing machine out real quick. And I really just did a straight stitch. From the bottom to the top you could also do that blanket stitch and leave it on the outside and that would be super cute too uh, i just did it this way i'm gonna hide the seam um, and all i did is i sewed it and then you turn it inside out if you know how to sew you know this is normal take your scissors which is not really recommended just be gentle um, a pencil an unsharpened pencil would work just something to turn it and get the tip of your hat out just like that I'll work on it before I put it on his little head um, anyway so I'll get the tip out what I did is I put the hat on and I measured where it was gonna go and then I measured from the bottom to the top top of the hat so I I just slipped the hat on and said okay that's a good place and I measured up on the tall one it's five inches and that's my five inch line and on the short one it's four inches so I gave him an extra inch so I'll show you what I did let me cut this out 
This and this works for my measurements, but you're gonna have to measure. This is five inches tall, and the square is four inches across. I found the center and then measured out a half an inch on either side. And this is gonna be my pattern for the large one for the taller beard. And this is how the beard's gonna sit when I cut it out, but I needed a pattern. So this is gonna work for my guy because he this is taller. That's where I'm gonna attach his hat, his beard, and then his nose. I'll probably cut out a little circle to put his nose in um, from the fur. I won't worry about it right this second. So this is the pattern for the large one. And then we'll cut out the short one, which is honestly almost the same width. It's just because they're the same width, but it's an inch shorter because it's an inch shorter. So there's that. And then this is just scrap paper. Okay, let me pull the fur up here and we'll mark it. All right, I just made a manageable piece. This is the fur. And you want to make sure that it's going in the right direction when you trace it. So this is the bottom because you don't want to have it upside down. So you make sure your fur is going in the right way. Lay it down. Um, I'm just lining up my bottom and my point right like that. And then I'm just going to trace it. I'm just using a Sharpie mostly so you can see it um, if I was just doing it. For me, I would just um, utilize a, probably a pencil. It's not a big deal, but I want you to be able to see how easy this is. And people get so intimidated by crafting. It's just, just do it. You know, if you make a mistake, whoopsie do, you made a mistake. So I'll see how I traced it out. Now I'm going to use my crafting scissors here. And I kind of want to try to go a little outside of these lines. And you're going to see a furry, furry mess. And you just have to kind of deal with it. You're cutting fake fur, right? Now, up this side, what I'm going to do is push the fur. Um, hopefully, I'm on the line. Let's see. Oh, nope, a little higher. Just because I don't want to cut too much you know I'm going to be able to have an, a lot of a fair amount of fur I should say and then on this side yeah we want it like that so we'll cut it like this and then I'm just going to cut one and I will speed up on the other one And that's what it looks like when you cut the fur. And then you just kind of have to, unfortunately, pull off some of the loose ones that got cut and just hope for the best that you didn't cut off too much. Like I said, it's not a big deal. Um, it's going to shed. It's going to shed where you cut it up top and wherever there isn't any attached. But this is going to go, un Ooh, this is going to go under the hat, which is fine. And then what I am going to do is give myself a little place to put the nose. So I'm going to just give myself that little cut. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to actually take my hot glue gun and reattach that fur so I don't lose that little bit of fur. And then we're going to throw a nose on there real quick. And I decided they're going to get um, like a gray nose that's not super big on this one. Oopsie. There. So I really just want to kind of attach the nose before I lose any extra fur that's underneath it. That's, oh, that's how we're going to do it on this one because this is smaller. And then we're gonna bring the body over and glue it just like that, right on top of the um, 
seam that I create. I need to get back in focus here. Right like that. We're going to just hot glue it right to the body. So I'm going to take my glue gun that I had warming up. And some people prefer to um, do the hat first. I prefer to do the body. And you can make whatever side the front you want. I decided this is going to tell me the center point. There we go. His little beard is on. I'm going to let it dry and cool before I go to put the hat on. But look at that. Is that adorable? Or what? And then his little hat is going to go right down to the nose. So give me a second. I'm going to cut out. The larger one and attach it the exact same way we're all glued on so what we're gonna do is put the hat on his head and then decide ooh, and then you just put it on just like you would like a kid's hat just like that um <coughs> excuse me I'm getting fur in my throat and then this will automatically just flip over like this. And this is just the basics. We don't have them really decorated yet. I haven't glued his hat on his head and all of that. But tell me that is not adorable. Um, now I have these hearts. And I think I want to put them like up here on the hat. I was thinking about putting them down here. But... I don't think so. I think what I'm going to do is take my metal nips and cut off the back of it because it's not really going to go through um, here. And once I have the hat attached, I'm going to hot glue it to the head so it doesn't slide around. I'm going to put that, I think, like right up here on his hat so you know it's Valentine's Day. But that's the basic, you can decorate this any way you want. I'm just gonna attach the hat and then I will show you the finished product where I put it on my mantle. Oh my goodness, guys. I think these turned out so adorable. Now I kinda, I'm gonna be fluffing with their fur just to try to get them, I carried them downstairs, but. <gasps> Tell me that is not so cute. And I would say to make these both was less than $15, but I have way, way, way a lot of materials left. But they are adorable. So I hope that video was helpful and that you enjoyed our Valentine's DIY gnomes or gnomeo and juliet <laughs> all right guys you have a good one bye